Welcome to EndNote 20 Getting Started. In this session, we look at an introduction to the EndNote software, which you can use to organize and store your references, as well as create in-text references and reference lists in a particular style. We will be covering how you can add references using direct export and manual entry, how you can use groups to organize your references, and how you can add the full articles to these references. We will also look at how you can work with Word to create in-text references and reference lists in a chosen style. The more recent versions of EndNote, which include Windows versions X9.3.3 and the Mac version of X9.3.2 and above, the libraries, which are files in which you store your references, created in these versions will not work in older versions. You are, however, able to share your libraries created in these earlier versions with users of older versions using EndNote Online. What happens when you open a library from these earlier versions in these newer versions? They will be converted by EndNote. Please note that these libraries, once converted, cannot be reversed. So you should always create backups of your libraries before upgrading. You can check for updates in EndNote 20 in Windows by clicking on the Help menu in EndNote, then choosing the Check for Updates option. On a Mac, you need to go into the EndNote 20 menu at the top left-hand corner and go to Check for Updates there. One of the most important things to remember when using EndNote is to regularly back up your library. We recommend to have at least three copies in different locations. These locations can include things like university servers, a quarantined web email account that isn't linked to other services such as social media. But keep in mind that most web email accounts have a limit on the size of attachment. So if you have a large library, this may not be feasible. When you create your backup and name it, we suggest including the word backup including no spaces and have a file name which is descriptive but not too long and to include the date that backup was, was created. Remember to backup regularly. It's not much use to have a backup that's six months old. We recommend weekly but backup to a time frame that suits you. Just consider how much time and effort it has taken to create your library. This is part of your research and the stress that it would cause in having to rebuild it. Unfortunately, cloud storage is problematic when using with EndNote. What can happen if saving your or storing your library on the cloud is that it can cause corruptions over time. The main issue is when you try and run your open and run your library from the cloud. We highly recommend downloading and run and saving your library on a local device and working on it there. You can then save your the updated version back to the cloud on completion. This will prevent any corruption occurring. Cloud is best used as backup where you're not regularly using or accessing your library or being able to access your library from different locations. The main thing to remember is to never work on your library when it is on the cloud. Always download it to your local device and work on it there. We will now go out and have a look at using EndNote. EndNote is available for download for current University of Queensland students and staff. It can be accessed from the library website, which we can see here under the research tools and techniques and in the referencing, EndNote referencing software link. Once you have installed EndNote and you open it for the first time, it will ask you what you would like to do. So you can either open an existing library or create a new one. We will create a new one. Save your library to a local drive area, remembering not to save it to the cloud. We recommend giving your library a file name, which is not the default. So for today, I'll call mine my research project. We now have a blank library we can start adding references to. 
When you do create an EndNote library file, what happens is it actually creates two files, which we can see stored here. One is your ENL library file and an associated data folder, which has the same file name. In order for your library to function fully, these two files must stay together and be saved in the same folder location. So when it comes to backing up your library, you can just copy and take both of these files and add them to your backup locations, but EndNote provides another option, which is a better way to go. This is in EndNote itself, and access through the file menu. This will be the same on a Mac. The option we need is the compressed library. If you're not familiar with file compression, this is where multiple files are saved into a single file. If you are a Mac user, there is an option called to save as a package, which is a similar idea. However, we recommend using the compressed library option as this will give you flexibility if you need to work with a Windows device. From here, you just need to follow the prompts. It will also give you the opportunity to rename your file. Just be aware that the create and email option will not work with web-based emails. Once you have saved your file, it will save into a single file with an ENLX extension. You can then save this, which is a copy. This can then be put into your backup locations, or alternatively, it is also useful to use if you need to email your library to anyone. Before we start adding references, we'll just have a bit of a look at what the library contains. On the left-hand side of your screen, in this column is where EndNote what it stores what it calls groups. Groups are essentially folders where you can store and organize your references. By default, you will see these groups up the top here, all references, recently added, unfiled and trash. These cannot be removed. However, you, with the My Groups area, this is where you are able to add your own groups to organize the references within your library. The other groups relate to various functions available in EndNote. Also, you will see temporary groups appearing based on particular functions that you might be carrying out. In the central pane or column is where once you have added references, the information is listed. And the, the information listed is based on the field names you can see in the column headings. These column heading field names can be adjusted and removed by right clicking. On the right hand side pane, once you have selected a reference in the middle, this is where you will see the full details. This information will include a summary, the ability to edit a reference. It will also list the currently selected referencing style and also provide a preview of a reference list entry based on the style currently selected. We will now look at how we can start adding references to our library. We are going to look at two methods, direct export and manual entry. Direct export is the first one we'll have a look at. And this is where we go to a search tools and export a reference or references from there and add them to EndNote. We will first go out and have a look at the University of Queensland library search. We recommend using either Chrome or Firefox as your web browser. Safari is not particularly useful when it comes to exporting from EndNote. Also for Mac users, be aware you do need to configure your system to export EndNote correctly. There are steps available on our EndNote page under the Using EndNote section. Chrome and Firefox do slightly different in how they deal with exporting to EndNote. So we will have a look at both. We will start off in Chrome. So firstly, we will get a list of records that we can select from to send to EndNote. Different search tools have different methods of exporting, but there are two common methods. One is to select the record you wish to send if you wish to send multiple ones 
by clicking on an icon which appears on the right hand side of a record. In this case, it is a pin. Another common icon you will see is a folder. This then adds it to a favorites list, which you then need to access to export all of the references. Here it is at the top with a pin icon. Other search tools might use the term folder. The other method is where they use a checkbox and then an export option. You are able to send a single reference or you can send multiple references. If you wish to send a single reference using the library search, you need to look for the three horizontal dots. This will display the export options, so we will choose to send a single one from here. There are a range of exports available. The one we need is Export RIS. You can also see an option for EndNote Web, but this is referring to EndNote's online version, known as EndNote Online. We are using the desktop and the export RIS works best. From here, we can then click on the download option. Chrome will either do one of two things. It will directly send the information to EndNote or it may send it to a download file, which will be appearing as a button in the bottom left-hand corner. If this is what happens with you, just click on the button and it should send directly to EndNote. If you are a Mac user, it may send it to your downloads area without the button. To access the file, you just need to go into your downloads, double click on the file, and it will ask you to then select the application. And you just, of course, need to choose EndNote from there. That will then send the information to your library. We will now click on download. If you ever click on this and nothing appears to happen, just check that you haven't got this particular website blocked in your pop-up blockers in your web browser settings. You will just need to make this website an exception. This is just a one step and then you should be right to go from there. As you can see, it has sent it directly to our library. It is advisable to have your library open before you start sending references. However, it will just open your EndNote program and send it to a library then. We can now see that our reference is listed in the middle pane here. And once we select it, we have further details showing up on the right. If we also have a look at our groups information, we can see a temporary group called imported references has appeared. This gives you the ability to check any references you've just brought in. It is always strongly recommended that you double check the information that has been sent by clicking on the edit option on the right hand side here. So you can see the full details and just ensure that the information has been added correctly. Unfortunately, some databases or sometimes the information may not come across completely or may not be correct from the database itself. We will now look at how you can send multiple references. In this case, you just need to come through and select the ones you would like to send. You can do this by clicking on them so that the pin icon, so it will change. And it also highlights the references we would like to send. Once you have selected all the references, you can then go to your favorites area. All the items you have selected will then be listed but the export option is not currently active, so we need to actually select the ones we would like to send. In this case, you can choose to select everything in your list, or you may like to choose individually. Once they are selected, our options become active, and then we just repeat the same steps. You will notice that the imported reference is now reading five, which is five we've just brought across, but our all references is reading six. Any reference you add will always be added to all references. This imported references just gives you that opportunity to double check the information. But if you'd like to see everything, you can just click on all references. So that's using the University of Queensland Library Search Another option is to use one of the databases. This time we will use Firefox. 
and we will use the database Scopus. Scopus is a subscription service, so you, you need to be a current University of Queensland student or staff member or belong to an institution that provides access to this service. It is a multidisciplinary database, which means it provides access to a wide range of discipline areas. So once you have accessed the database, you can again do a search to get a list of records. This database uses the other common method of a checkbox, which usually appears on your left-hand side here. You can again select either one or multiple references to send. In this case, we have sent selected multiple ones. And this time we need to look for the export option. It's not the download, it is the export. Again, different search tools have slightly different methods of exporting and they may be labeled slightly differently. Look for something that says export. It may also be under download, site or save. You will just need to check the options available. Once we have selected it, we can then choose which of the export options we need. And we need the one that says RIS. RIS is just a type of file that EndNote recognises. But you can see it's also labelled EndNote. Some databases like Scopus will also give you the opportunity to select which field you would like to send to EndNote. I'm just going to add abstract. And then we just need to click on export. So with Firefox, it gives you this option we can see here. We need to open it. It should default to an EndNote option or this Research Soft Direct Export Helper, which is also correct. If neither of those appear, click on Other and you should have EndNote as an option. You can also select this, do this automatically for files like this from now on to have it send straight there. When you're ready, just click on OK, and it should then add those references. So we have another five added, but we now have 11 in total. That is how the direct export will work from a database using a checkbox option. The final one we will have a look at is Google Scholar. You can set up Google Scholar to export to EndNote as well. There are two methods you can export to EndNote. One is a setting you need to set up. You can do this by going to the three horizontal lines in the top left-hand corner and going into settings. From here, we just come to the bottom one under Bibliography Manager and select the Show Links option and change the drop-down to EndNote and save that setting into our browser. Another setting which isn't 100% related to EndNote but is just useful to note is if you are a University of Queensland student or staff, you can also set it up to include a link out to the University of Queensland Library. Again, come into your settings in the three horizontal lines, but this time in the options in the top left, go into library links. And from here, just search for UQ and look for University of Queensland Library. Select it and save. And then from now on, when you do a search, you will, in most cases, get a link to check if that particular resource is available through UQ. Once again, we do a search to have some results. Then to export the results one at a time, you can either use this import to EndNote link, which as you can see at with each record. You can also click on the double, half a double quote icon, site icon. And while it does give you different referencing styles, you can also export to EndNote from here. This is a setting you don't have to put in. Once you click on that, it should then send to EndNote. Remember once again to double check the information for Google Scholar in particular.
it is possible to send multiple references using Google Scholar. However, it is limited in the number it will send at one time. You also need to be logged in to your Google account. If you wish to send multiple ones, once you are logged into your Google account, you can then save them by clicking on the star icon. This will save it to your My Library area. And from here, you are able to export multiple references. Generally though, it is limited to the number on the page. So you can only send a page of references at a time. It's usually about 20. So that is how you can use direct export to send references to EndNote. The other method we are going to have a look at is manual entry. There are instances where you have references that are not available in any downloadable format. A free website is a prime example. So manual entry can be used in these cases. To do this, you can, in EndNote, either click on the new reference icon, which we can see here, the clipboard, or you can come into references and new reference. And this will be the same on a Mac. The first thing to do is to tell EndNote what type of reference it is. This is to ensure when it outputs to your reference list, the information appears correctly. So as you can see, there's an extensive list arranged alphabetically. We will choose journal article here, but there are a range available. However, if you do start typing in the information and haven't changed it to the correct one, you are able to switch between them. Just double check that the information has come across correctly. Most fields are fairly evident how, what information you need to include. However, there are a couple that you do need to do a particular format. Authors in particular. So for an author, you need to include the last name first, followed by the full first name where possible. This just helps differentiate between authors which, who have the same last name and first initial. If you do need to use initials, ensure that you are consistent in how you add them. For example, always use full stops if you use a full stop for an initial. If you have multiple authors, they each need to go on their own line. Also, if you use group authors, such as a government institution, a company, professional association, you need to enter them with a comma at the end. If you do not include this comma, EndNote will treat it like a person's name. So the University of Queensland, for example, will come out as the comma and then u.o.q if you needed initials for the author. You can then just go through and fill in the relevant information. There are many fields available to you and the fields will vary based on the reference type. But the basics is just the essentials of a reference. In titles, some referencing styles require a particular format. For example, sentence case in APA. It is best to enter the information as required for your referencing style where possible. Also with volume, issue and pages in things like a journal article reference type, don't include any type of labels such as volume. The referencing style will, that EndNote has will deal with whatever is required. So if you include additional information, it will then output incorrectly. So always just include the number for this for these fields. Other useful fields are these reference, research notes and notes fields. This is where you can include large amounts of text that may relate to your reference. You can also attach files. Once you have entered the information as required, just click on save and this will save your reference to the library, as we can see here. At any point, if you need to edit a reference, just highlight it 
and click on the edit option at the top on the right hand side. You can then go through and make any changes as needed. Remember, you must edit the information here and not in Word. That is two ways you can add references to your library. We will now look at how you can use your groups to organise the references within your library. We strongly recommend having one library for all your research. This is particularly useful when it comes to working with a thesis, or you may have separate chapter documents, for example, that you need to combine into a final document. When working with Word, references should always only come from one library. You cannot have references from different libraries going into the same Word document. If you do this, it can cause confusion and may corrupt your Word document. However, it is possible to have as many Word documents as you like associated with one EndNote library. To help deal with this, EndNote provides the ability to add your own groups, which you can then sort your references. You can add groups by either right-clicking where it says My Groups or using the Groups menu. You can then create, choose Create Group and give your group a relevant name. Once you have created a group, you are then able to select references from your All References group. You can either drag and drop them into, your, into the relevant group. You can also right click on a highlighted reference and go to Add References To in the menu. This is also available in your Groups menu. You are also able to add what EndNote refers to as group sets. So this is where you have a group with subgroups. And this might be useful if you have particular ways you want to organise within a particular project, for example. Once again, you can either right click on My Groups or go to your Groups menu and access the Create Group Set option. This will then give you a name for your group set. Note this isn't a group itself, it's just the group set name. To then create subgroups, right click on this group set name and go to create group set. You can also access this through your groups menu. You can then give each group or subgroup a name. Remember this is create group, not create group set. You are then able to add, again, references to that particular group. You are able to add a reference to multiple groups. And if you ever want to check which groups a reference has been added to, just highlight it come up to References menu and go into Reference Summary. At the bottom you can see Custom and Smart Groups and this will list any groups it has been added to. And that's how you can make use of My Groups to organise your references. We will now look at how you can add the full reference or the full article to your references. EndNote provides three options to do this. The first one is where you have added your reference and you have also downloaded the full article separately. You can then attach that article to the particular reference. A bit like attaching something to an email. So highlight the reference you would like to add the file to. You are able to add a number of different file types and you are able to add multiple files. EndNote also provides a PDF reader, so you're able to read any PDF files from within EndNote itself. But you are able to add other things like image files. 
You can either just in the summary option, click on attach file, or if you're in the edit option, you can come down to the file attachments field and click on attach file from there. Select the file you would like to include and click on open. And then you can see we have an active PDF button. You can also see this in the summary option. When you click on this, you are able to either open within EngNote, open with your PDF reader. So we will just open within EngNote. As you can see, your PDF will open in, in a separate window. And from here, you are able to add things like annotations. Please note that this EngNote creates a copy of your PDF. So you will have the original stored in elsewhere. Any any annotations that you make to the EndNote saved copy will not be available in your original. However, if your original document had annotations or highlights, they will come across and be readable within EndNote. The second method to add a full article is to import the PDF. This will only work with PDF files. So rather than downloading the reference, downloading the PDF separately and then attaching the PDF, you can just download the PDF and then try to import it. Unfortunately, not all PDFs can be imported correctly using EndNote and you won't know until you try. However, to do this, if you go up into File and Import and File, you are also able to add a folder. So if you have a, a multiple collection of PDFs in a single folder, you can try importing the whole thing. Choose the file you would like to import. Ensure that your import option is saying PDF. If you are a Mac user and you cannot see these options, Click on the options button in the bottom left hand corner of this window and you should be able to access them there. Once you click on import, EndNote will scan the PDF and attempt to bring the information across. When it is effective, you can see here that it has added the relevant information, such as author, year, title, etc. And it has also attached the PDF. When it doesn't work, what will happen is it will create a reference, but the only information listed will be the attached PDF and the name of the PDF file in your title field. You will then need to manually enter the information about the PDF into your reference. The third method is using the find full text function. Again, unfortunately, this was not always 100% effective. It is better when you are using a UQ campus device or connected via the VPN. To access, highlight the references you would like to check. Just remember, the more that you choose, the slower this will be. You can then either click, right click, and go to find full text. You can also go into the references menu. Of course, you will also need to be connected to the internet. Once it is working, you will see this little option search and come up and it will tell you its success. So it will say found PDFs, or it can find the web addresses. This is less useful as it will provide a link that doesn't include the link to access the U University of Queensland library subscriptions. It was more of a direct link. But it has found a couple, and we can see there the PDF is now attached. So those are the three ways that you can use EndNote to include the full article of your reference. We will now go out to Word 
and see how you can create in-text references and reference lists with using EndNote. You can insert references to an existing document or you can add them as you are writing. When you install EndNote, it will install EndNote tools into Word. To insert your references, access the EndNote 20 tools. If you are a Mac user, this toolbar will look slightly different. The functions are all there, they're just organised slightly differently. The first thing to do is to tell it what referencing style you wish to use. The style is listed in the tools and you, from here you can either select from a short list or if the one you want isn't there, you can go into select another style and see the full list that comes with EndNote. It is also possible to add to this list and you need to do this in EndNote itself. You can also see in EndNote the referencing style that is currently selected. To add additional styles, you can download these from websites, in particular from the endnote.com website. There are also a number of ones written specifically for the University of Queensland that you can access from our EndNote pages. If you would like to check what's available through endnote.com, you can go into help and access the EndNote output styles there. This will take you to the EndNote website and the output styles, which are the referencing styles. There are literally thousands available from here, so always double check here first. You can search for a style that you're interested in. When you have located one you would like to add, you can then just download it. Once it is downloaded, Open the file, and this should then open within EndNote, as we can see here. So this is the style template, all the functions and rules about creating this particular molecular cell style. To save it into EndNote, just go to File, Save As, select the name which you would like to save it under. Once you have saved it, you can then just close that window. And then when you go either to EndNote or into your Word options, you should be able to access the style from there. And there we can see molecular cell. I'm going to go with EndNote APA 7. However, if you accidentally start writing or adding references in the incorrect style, you can easily change it even to an extensive document. All you have to do is then select the style you do need to use and EndNote will update any references already added to that style. It is easy to move between an author date style such as APA and a numbered style such as Vancouver. Footnote styles are possible but involve a few more steps. If you do need to use a footnote style such as Chicago, please talk to your librarian. First thing, once you have selected your style, is to insert or place your cursor where you need the reference to appear. Wherever the cursor is, is where the reference will be included. You can then come up into Insert Citation, and there are a couple of options available here. The first Insert Citation that we are going to look at is once you have selected it, you can then search for the reference you would like to use. The best way to search is the author name. Once it has either found a match or it may find multiple matches, you can then either select from the list and whichever one is highlighted, the full details appear down the bottom so you can ensure you choose the right one. There are a range of options when it comes to inserting. You can insert in the default format, but you can also choose other formats. For example, you can choose to exclude the author. This is useful if you have used the author name as part of your sentence, such as Peter, Peters has argued, when you normally use the author name as part of the sentence, the in-text reference should then only include the year if it's an author date. 
that we will just insert. Once you have inserted it, it will appear as needed and it will also start adding the reference list at the end of your document. And then you can just repeat those steps for each reference you would like to add. If I was going to use Peters multiple times in my document, you will only ever add it to the reference list once and it will remain there until the last instance of that reference is removed. The second option you can use to insert a reference is the insert selected ref citations option. This one is particularly useful if you need to add multiple references from in the, within the same reference. This is common if you are found the information from a variety of sources. So to do this step, ensure that the correct reference is selected in your EndNote library, return to Word, place your cursor where you would like it to appear, and then choose under Insert Citation, Insert Selected Citations. As you can see, the multiple references are now added, and they are also all added to my reference list. And it has been sorted alphabetically by first author last name as required under APA. Other things you can do with your references include add page numbers, change the formatting. Any edits or changes you would like to make to a reference must be done using the EndNote tools. You cannot do this using Word. That's because this text is created by EndNote and each time it then updates, it will remove anything it doesn't recognise. So to add things like page numbers, highlight the reference you would like to change or add the page numbers to and come up to the Edit and Manage Citations option in the EndNote tools. From here, all your references are listed in order of appearance and then you've got the various options available in the second half. For pages, you can use the pages box. You can also use the suffix box. If you're not familiar, suffix means at the end. So if you put anything in the suffix box, it will appear at the end of your reference. You can also put text in front of your reference in the prefix field. So you might like to include something like as cited in or see also. Remember to leave a space at the end so the text doesn't come up hard against the author name. You can also change the formatting to an existing reference in the formatting dropdown. Once you have added that, we can see it has now adjusted that reference. Also, it will only adjust that specific reference. Any other instances of Peters within my document will remain the same. If you need to remove a reference, best practice is to not use cut or the backspace or delete keys. This is because for this formatting to appear, there is code sitting behind it. And if you don't remove it cleanly using the EndNote tools, stray code can be left behind and over time corrupt your document. So select the reference you would like to remove. Once again, come up to Edit and Manage Citations and come up to the top where it says Edit Reference. From the drop down, choose Remove Citation. It will then cleanly remove it, and if it's the only instance of that particular reference, it will also remove it from your reference list. If you do need to edit a reference or information within a reference list, Remember to make the change within EndNote itself. Again, if I change it here using Word, it will keep reverting to whatever information is available at EndNote. So I might need to edit Durham. So if I come back and select my Durham entry and go into Edit, I can then make the change that I need, which I'd like to do to the journal name. and then save that into the library. To then see that change in my Word document, I need to update. And you can always update your document by clicking on Update Citations and Bibliographies. This will refresh 
with whatever new information you've just included. Oftentimes you need to submit your document to something like turn it in, authenticate, or you might be submitting to a journal. We recommend sending a document that is no longer attached to EndNote. Basically, it's removing the EndNote field codes. There is an option to do this within, EndNote, within the EndNote tools. First, save your Word document. Then come up to Convert Citations and Bibliography in your EndNote tools and select Convert to Plain Text. This will be similar on a Mac. EndNote will give you an explanation of what it's about to do. And basically what it does is creates a copy that has removed the field codes. And what this means is you are no longer able to edit those references or reference lists. But EndNote retains its original version, so you still have that EndNote connection. If I now look, I can see I've got my original document on the left, but I have an unsaved plain text version on the right. And you can tell by when you click on a reference, it no longer goes grey. You can then save that plain text version. And we highly recommend saving it with a file name that indicates that it is the plain text version. This prevents you from inadvertently deleting the wrong one, which we have seen happen. The issue is, with the plain text version, you are able to actually start adding EndNote references at this point, but these original references will no longer be able to be edited by EndNote, and you will also get to reference lists. So this should be the final step before you submit. That's how you can use Word with EndNote.